am I in the air? Alright, alright, alright. What is going down, everybody? Welcome back to another brand new edition of Am I on the Air? My name is Don Mega, and I'm your host, and I'm so happy that you're here to join me today. It is December the 5th, 2023, and we're ready to do a brand new Am I on the Air, breaking down the latest and the greatest when it comes to entertainment news in television, in movies, with some non spoiler movie reviews. You come right here on a week-to-week basis to get caught up with it all. We're broadcasting live from the Red Dragons Radio Studios here in Tucson, Arizona. It is season 27, episode 15, and tonight's show is called The Silent Games. We're going to be talking about four movies and about another four television shows, so we got a lot of reviews to talk through and then, of course, get you guys caught up with the news of the week. So let's, without any further ado, jump on in. And remember, this is non-spoiler, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Starting off first, my first new movie that I went into this weekend to check out is the newest release in the action genre, directed by John Woo. He is back, and he's back with Silent Night. This was a movie that, when I saw the trailer a couple months back, I was super, super bought in, sold a John Woo action film starring Joel Kinnaman in an action crime over the top thriller, right? Perfect. Sign me up. Let's do this. Love John Woo because he is the man behind one of my all time favorite films, Face Off. He is a master of action, and this is his first American action movie in quite some time. And this one's about a tormented father who witnesses his young son die when caught in a gang's crossfire on Christmas Eve. While recovering from a wound that cost him his voice, he makes vengeance his life's mission and embarks on a punishing training regimen in order to avenge his son's death. So yeah, sounds great, right? This one stars Joel Kinnaman. He is the father, right? His son gets hit with a stray bullet and passes away, and of course... He goes into a depression. Um, he Now, this is in the trailer. He goes after the thugs right away when it happens. And this is the first, like, five minutes of the movie. And he gets shot in the throat. So he can't talk. Hence the title, Silent Night. Now, what I'll tell you is not only does he not talk, no one talks in this movie. This is a silent night of a film. No one talks. There is zero dialogue in this movie. The only time you hear anything audible is police radars in the background, the radio in a car, you know, stuff like that is where you maybe hear some chatter, but no one in the movie itself talks, which I get what you're going for. But in an action movie like this, it doesn't quite work. And it comes off really cheesy that no one talks to each other. Like Joel Kinnaman's character is married and his wife is trying to talk to him and he's just not responding. But they're trying to communicate through text messaging, even though they're in the same house. Stuff like that, that it's like, why wouldn't you just talk to him? He's not deaf. You know, like, why are we texting him when he's standing 10 feet in front of you? Um just the way a lot of these characters play out by not talking comes off cheesy. And the movie is, it's an hour and 45 minutes. It's a slow burn at times. It really takes a while to get going because you're going through that grieving process. And, you know, there were several moments where I was like, okay, we get it. You lost your kid. I'm sorry. Like, let's move on. Right? Like they just stretch it out too long. Where the movie succeeds is the buildup, right? Like he, You see him learning how to fight. You see him learning how to shoot a gun. You see him practicing things and learning things. It's not like 
his son passes and he goes after this gang and he just is able to kill them all. No, like he has to practice. He has to do things and prepare for this. And he has it meticulously planned out. And that's what's really cool about this movie is the planning stage of it all. And then, of course, the action is top notch. I expect nothing less from John Woo. Mission Impossible 2, guys. You know, John Woo knows his action. He knows how to get it done. And the action is awesome in this movie. So it's a mixed bag for me because I did like it. I would have preferred some dialogue in the movie. It is very slow in the first half, but the second half is really badass. And there's some cool kills, and there's some violent action, and I was there for it. So at the end of the day, I give Silent Night 3 out of 5 stars. It was good, but not great. So there's your first flick right there, Silent Night now in theaters. And then I was able to go back to the movies over the weekend and watch another one, and it's one I missed last week, which was The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I was really busy the weekend this movie came out, so that's why I did not review it on last week's show, Um, but I wanted to make sure I got to it this weekend. So I went and checked it out, directed by Francis Lawrence, who did uh, the original movie. And this one here is 64 years before he becomes the tyrannical president of Pan Am, uh, Corlanus Snow sees a cha- chance for a change in the fortunes when he mentors Lucy Gray Bard, the female tribute from District 12. So this one here um, stars Tom Blythe, Rachel Zegler, uh, Peter Dinklage is in here, Viola Davis, uh, Jason Schwartzman. And um, so, yeah, this is a prequel series that really focuses on the character that Donald Sutherland plays in the original movies, um, you know, as the president of Pan Am, this is his kind of rise, right? And he's in school and he gets paired with Lucy Gray played by Rachel Zegler, um, to mentor her in the hunger games. But they're also at the same time trying to revamp the hunger games and make them better than what they were. Uh, I think this movie is the 10th annual hunger games when they go into it. And you see a lot of the stuff as they start to put, Um, changes into the Hunger Games that these are things that we see in the later movies, right, with Jennifer Lawrence. So here's my thing with this movie. Um, Was it good? Yes, it was a good movie. It was actually better than I thought it would be. I really didn't have much desire to see this. I do like those original films, um, but I've never gone back and revisited any of them. (laughs) Like they're kind of like, okay, that was good, and I move on with my life, right? So going into a prequel, I was like, uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, but I thought Tom Blythe's um, portrayal and character of Snow was really good. And I loved Rachel Zegler in this movie. I thought she was fantastic. She was so good. And she sings in this movie and she looks gorgeous. And it just, uh, it was a win-win all the way around with uh, Lucy Gray. So it was an interesting story. I did not read the book, so I went in blind to it, and I had a good time with it. My negatives, the movie's too damn long. It's it's about two hours and 45 minutes, and that's way too long for this movie. I felt it drag. The movie was re- going really, really well for me for like the first hour 45, and then at one point I looked at my watch and I said, holy shit, there's still an hour to go on this thing. And it definitely slows down at a certain point and kind of whimpers out, to be honest. Like the movie is is really fire, 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 and then whimpers out. Um, I don't know what else they could have done to make it better, to be honest, because, you know, unless you make it into two movies, but then the second movie would have been super boring. So I don't know how they would have really swung that. So I guess they did the best they could. Um, I don't think I could really sit through and watch this all over again, but I did have a good time watching it. So at the end of the day, I would give the hunger games, the ballad of songbirds and snakes three out of five stars. It was good. And we'll go from there. Okay. My next film is we're heading on over to streaming and we got a couple streamers here to talk about up first candy cane lane. We've been on this little roll here of holiday movies on last week's show. I talked about dashing through the snow and genie. And then now we switch on over to prime video 
And we got Eddie Murphy's new holiday film, Candy Cane Lane. This one stars Eddie Murphy, Tracy Ellis Ross. You got Jillian Bell in here. Uh, Nick Offerman pops up. Chris Redd from SNL. Um, David Allen Greer. So some good casting here. And this one's about a man determined to win the neighborhood's annual Christmas decorating contest. He makes a pact with an elf to help him win. However, the elf casts a spell, bringing the 12 days of Christmas to life, bringing chaos to the small, unsuspecting town. So this is, uh, you know, it's one of these little cheesy holiday, you know, Christmas movies. Um, The premise is really silly, right? It's like this neighborhood that they call Candy Cane Lane where all the houses get really dolled up for Christmas. And Eddie Murphy wants to win, right? He wants his house to be the best. And he always loses to the house across the street uh, that has Ken Marino living over at it. So this year he finds this Christmas shop and he meets Jillian Bell's character and he buys this amazing 12 days of Christmas tree uh, that he puts in his front yard that everybody is in love with. But of course the, you know, the, the elf played by Jillian Bell is kind of uh she meant when he signs his receipt, it's almost like a pack with the devil kind of thing. And the 12 days of Christmas come to life and they have to go on this journey to kind of, uh, collect these coins, um, the golden rings to restore everything back to normal, but it's a really fun movie. My daughter loved this one. Um, I laughed a lot at this and I just love Eddie Murphy. So it's always good to see him bring his a game. And he was really good in this for being a PG rated family flick. It was a lot of fun, man. You know, again, um, I don't know what else to expect from a Christmas type movie, I thought it had a decent enough premise, it had a great cast, and it had some really good laughs. So at the end of the day, I think it did its job, and I really liked it. So over on Prime Video, you can check it out now. Candy Cane Lane, I'm going to give three candy canes out of five. So there you go there. And then lastly, on the movie side, uh, also a little Christmassy, but you know... um, Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a Christmas theme, but not as directly as Candy Cane Lane, and that is Family Switch. This is a new movie that's streaming over on Netflix. It is a comedy, fantasy, family film. Uh, When the Walker family members switch bodies with each other during a rare planetary alignment, their hilarious journey to find their way back to normal will bring them closer together than they ever thought possible. So this movie here is a Switch comedy, right? You got... um, Jennifer Garner leading this one with Ed Helms. Um, And then you got Brady Noon playing the son. He was the main lead over on Disney Plus's Mighty Ducks. And then you got Emma Myers over here as the daughter. And she was uh, Enid over on the Wednesday show on Netflix. So it was good to see uh, the family dynamic there. And um, yeah, I mean, this is, I'm going to say it. This movie is very cookie cutter. It is very cookie cutter, right? We've seen Switch movies before. It's a family. They're dysfunctional. They're not getting along. They don't know what to do. And they are arguing at this planetary uh, planetarium one night. And they're arguing, you couldn't handle my life. No, you couldn't handle my life. Oh, man, if you could just walk in my shoes one day. And boom, right? The, you know, the, the twist happens. And they wake up in each other's bodies, right? So the son is now the dad. The daughter is now the mom. The mom's now the daughter. The dad's now the son. Uh, also, in a really funny twist, the baby. There is a baby in the household. And the baby switches with the dog, which is hilarious hilarious that actually gave me more laughs than probably anything else in this film was the dog walking around and the baby running around like a dog it was pretty hilarious um other than that like i said it is cookie cutter right like this is one of those movies that of course the switch happen when very important things are about to happen in these people's lives, right? Like Jennifer Garner's character is up for a promotion and the daughter is great at soccer and she's got the scouts coming to see her and the son is a recluse, but the dad likes the attention. So, you know, when they switch, it's like, Oh my God, what are we going to do? Um, but that's what makes these movies fun, right? Is trying to overcome the obstacles. So at the end of the day, this is another movie that I have to judge on the family dynamic that this movie's going for, right? Did it hit all the buttons for me personally? No, but again, my daughter really liked it. 
I think it hits the demographic it's going for. It is a very PG rated family flick that is on Netflix and it's a fun little thing. I like body swapping stuff. Like all, all buddy swap movies are always pretty funny to see how people would act in someone else's shoes. So even though we've seen this done a million times and sometimes we've seen it done better, um, I think everybody in here did a great job and it does have some pretty good laughs. Um, even though the story itself is very, very meh and cookie cutter, but the job, I think the movie does its job of what it intended to do. So I would give family switch three out of five stars. So there you go, guys. That's my four movie reviews for you guys. And then we're going to move over to the TV side. And the first new show I checked out is a new Netflix original called obliterated. Now, I almost didn't even jump into this show because just from the pictures and things I've seen of it, I never saw a trailer. Um, I thought it looked really, really cheesy. Then I found out that this is from the guys who do Cobra Kai. And I said, oh, that's why it looks cheesy. (laughs) because It's the Cobra Kai guys. But that's not to say anything bad. Like, Cobra Kai is cheesy, but it's fun cheesy. And that's why I love Cobra Kai because it's that 80s throwback vibe. What Obliterated is, is it's a comedy, action, adventure, drama about this, like, military team, special forces team that end up getting effed up on some drugs, but then they have a mission to do and all the craziness that ensues while they're in Las Vegas. And it's a very loose premise, but I like what they're going with here because... The Cobra Kai creators are basically like, I read an article with one of them saying, you know, after five or six years in that Cobra Kai world, we were really excited to dig into our R-rated, you know, side of our brains. Because this is very R-rated. There's sex, there's drugs, there's nudity, there's, you know, violence. There's a lot of stuff that goes into this show. But it is done in a very fun way. And they wanted it to be a throwback to the 80s, 90s kind of action movies. And I think there, they succeed at that. So I'm having fun with this. I think it's eight episodes. I've watched the first four, so I'm halfway through the season. And I'm having a good time with it, so I would recommend Obliterated over on Netflix. My next new show I checked out is Bookie. Bookie is a new comedy um, that is on Max. And um, this is about two bookies collecting debts across L.A. And... um, This one here is headed up by, I always forget how to say his last name, but it's Sebastian Maniscalco, and then his partner, um, Ray, played by Omar Dorsey. And um, these two guys, this is from Chuck Lorre, who did a lot of sitcoms, right? Like Two and a Half Men and um, uh, Big Bang Theory and a whole bunch more, but... Um, this is a little half hour sitcom about these two guys going around LA trying to collect debts and the kind of craziness that they assume as they're trying to do it. The first two episodes dropped, I watched them and I'm really digging this show. So I like it. I'll give it a thumbs up and I'll continue my journey on bookie. And once again, that's on max. My next new show I checked out was the curse. This is a new show that is streaming on Paramount plus. Um, you got to have the Showtime part of uh, Paramount Plus also because it's technically a Showtime show, uh, but it streams on Paramount Plus. And uh, this stars Emma Stone along with Nathan Fielder and Benny Safdie. Well, Emma Stone and Nathan Fielder's characters are married and they are in this little town and they're basically doing like an HGTV um, type of show about housing. And they're trying to build these new houses that are eco-friendly and they're really trying to capitalize on this little, little town. Um, But the husband played by Nathan Fielder in the first episode, he does something a little bad and a little girl curses him. She's like, you're cursed and things are going to go crazy. I've only watched the first episode. I think they're up to episode four now. Um, First episode is slow. It's very slow. It's labeled as a comedy drama, but it's not funny at all. I don't know how this comedy label got on it because I think IMDb has it listed as a comedy as well. It's not. (laughs) It is very much a drama and the humor is very dry if there's any. Um, And it's just very slow moving. So I'm hoping now that this 
curse has been set, the following episodes will start to have some crazy shit going on because I need more to really stick around. So I'm only half in on the curse so far, but it's a great cast. I'll definitely see where it goes. And once again, streams weekly on Paramount Plus with Showtime. All right. And then lastly, I started Fargo Season 5. Now, Fargo is a show like American Horror Story that is an anthology show, so every season is a whole new story. Um, I've never watched any of the other seasons of Fargo. I just never cared. But I saw the trailer to this season five, and I thought it looked really good, so I checked it out. I've watched the first three episodes, but this is a weekly show too, so I'm caught up. And I believe the first three have dropped so far. And it stars Julo, uh, Juno Temple in this one with Jennifer Jason Lee, uh, Joe Keery from Stranger Things, uh, Lamorne Morris from New Girl, and John Hamm, of course, in here. Um, this one here is supposedly based on a true story. Um, John Hamm is a sheriff in um, Minnesota, and he's a couple towns over from where Juno Temple lives. And you start to see this mystery unfold that she used to be married to John Hamm's character, but she broke off from him and ran away and changed her identity. And she's trying to get away from him, basically, but he found her, and now he wants her back. So that's kind of the premise. And I dig it. I dig it. The first three episodes are solid and I'm excited to see where the show goes. So you can stream this on FX and you can also watch it on Hulu. So there you go. Uh, that's our new shows. Then lastly, I just want to really quickly shout out that power book three raising Canaan is back for uh, season three, I believe season three. Yeah. Season three, season four, I believe season three. Um, it, so that just started last week as well too. So good to see that show back. I did watch the premiere. Good stuff. I'm right back in it. So that's what we got. So th that's our big four new shows, um, that we got going on. So let's recap, um, the eight things here. So we got silent night now in theaters, three out of five stars, the hunger games, ballad of songbirds and snakes in theaters right now, three out of five stars, candy cane lane over on prime video, three out of five stars and family switch over on Netflix, three out of five stars on the TV side. We got obliterated. This is on Netflix, Fargo season five on Hulu bookie over on max, the curse on Paramount Plus with Showtime. So there you guys go. That's what we got on the review side. Woo doggy. Um, yeah, we're 21 minutes in and all we've done are reviews. So thank you guys. I know it's a lot, but I know a lot of you love to listen to the show just for the review. So I, I'd like to have that content for you guys. All right, let's switch on over to the box office. Coming in at number 10 from this weekend is Thanksgiving. Number 9 was Silent Night. I can't believe it in its debut. A new John Woo action film only made 3 mil and number 9. Number 8 was The Shift. Number 7 was Animal. Number 6, Napoleon, which dropped 65%. Ooh. Number 5 was Wish. Number 4 was Trolls Band Together. Big debut here at number three, Godzilla minus one. I know um, my boy Friggins went and saw it. He loved it. He gave it five stars. I'm seeing rave reviews all around for this movie. I don't know if I'll get a chance to see it in the theater. Um, maybe I'll check it out one of these days, but um, I've heard nothing but great things. So very happy for Godzilla, uh, who's having a major renaissance right now. We got this movie in theaters killing it. We got Monarch on Apple TV Plus killing it. And we just got the trailer for Godzilla and Kong, the sequel, which looks awesome. So it comes out in April of next year. So Godzilla killing it, doing his thing. 11.4 mil at number three. Number two is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. That's right, The New Hunger Games. And number two with 14.1 mil. And number one, congratulations to Beyonce Renaissance. A film by Beyonce was number one in its debut, $21.8 million. That's a hell of a debut there, Beyonce, uh, for another concert movie, man. So Taylor Swift just left theaters with her Eras tour. And Beyonce came in and swooped it up and said, I will continue the journey. So very, very cool there um, on that side of things. All right, guys, let's jump into the news of the week and get you through this stuff. And again, if you want to check out any of these trailers, check out any full articles, best place is to check out our Twitter page, twitter.com slash am I on the air to get the full breakdown. All right, they're going to do a new movie called The Apprentice, and uh, it is going to be about a young Donald Trump and Sebastian Stan. That's right. The Winter Soldier himself is going to be playing Donald Trump in this upcoming movie. Uh, the new Stephen King movie, The Long Walk, is going to be directed by Francis Lawrence, who just did the Hunger Games movie. Uh, 
Suits spinoff is moving forward. It looks like it might get an L.A. setting. Gangs of London Season 3 cast has added Warriors Andrew Koji to the cast. That's a great addition there for that. We have the new trailer for The End We Start From, starring Jodie Comer as she navigates motherhood during an environmental crisis. Uh, We have the new trailer for Night Swim. Um, This is a new Blumhouse movie coming out in January, and this trailer is really good. I hated the first Night Swim trailer. I thought it sucked, but this trailer makes me want to see the movie. So great job, guys. That's the job of a trailer, and I thank you for the updated version. Godfather of Harlem has been uh, renewed for season four over on MGM+. Shogun is coming soon to FX. It is the Samurai Epic series. So keep an eye out for that. The Gold has been renewed for season two over at the BBC. Matt Smith is set to lead a new darkly comic miniseries called The Death of Bunny Monroe. Um, Night Swim will be hitting theaters on January 5th. The Ted Show is coming soon to Peacock. It is an event series based on the movie Ted. That's right, the Teddy Bear movie. And it's going to be a prequel series set in the early 90s with Mark Wahlberg's character going into high school and uh, how him and Ted handle it. It comes out uh, January 11th over on Peacock. And along with that, we got two new trailers. Two. We got a green band one and we got a red band one. I love the red band one with a little intro there from Seth MacFarlane. It looks awesome, so check that out. According to Bruce Campbell, his cameos in Spider-Man and Doctor Strange are the same characters. Ooh, same universe, baby. Chicago Med has cast Luke Mitchell as a new Doctor for Season 9. Congratulations to The Irrational and Found. Both shows have been renewed for Season 2 over at NBC. Um, I actually watch Found um, every week, and uh, I really like the show a lot. I did not watch The Irrational, um, but I know a lot of people that do. So I'm glad that both these shows have been picked up for second seasons. Uh, Bob Hart's Abishola is going to be ending with its upcoming season five that they're doing. Paramount Plus has announced that they're going to do an exclusive discount for AARP members. That's pretty cool there. Get it done. Uh, SNL vet Kate McKinnon is going to be making her hosting debut in December, and Adam Driver has also been set for his fourth time as host. Production is officially underway for Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Taylor Swift, Bad Bunny, and Miley Cyrus are topping Spotify's most stream list. I know a lot of you have been doing your unwrapped, and uh, you know that's that's the top of the top right there. Anya Taylor Joy stars in Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. We got the first teaser trailer finally for this, and it looks. Awesome. I love it. Not only does it star Anna Taylor Joy, but you have Chris Hemsworth in here. Badass trailer. I love it. Eli Roth is going to be returning for seconds over on Thanksgiving. That's right. The horror film, which has grossed over 30 million globally to date, is getting a sequel from Sony's TriStar Pictures. The untitled Thanksgiving 2 is set to open theatrically in 2025. So, congratulations, man. We waited a long time to get Thanksgiving. It was a really fun movie. And I'm glad it's coming back for a part two. Let's get it. Michelle Williams is set to star in a new FX limited series called Dying for Sex. Um, Only Murders in the Building season one is going to get a broadcast network debut over on ABC as they try to fill that schedule due to the strike there. Hunger Games' Gary Ross has been tapped to direct a new sports movie called Old Time Hockey. Swagger has been canceled over on Apple TV Plus after two seasons. Billy Magnuson and Alexandra Shipp are set to lead a new revenge thriller called Violent Ends. Tom Holland says he's open to returning as Spider Man if it's worth the while. Tom, stop fucking around, dude. You're going to be Spider Man. We know you're coming back. Stop acting like you're bigger than the character. This is like, you know, when Chris Evans talks about, oh, I'm so close to the to the Captain America role. It, I hold it with such regard. And then Tom Holland, same thing. I hold Spider Man with such regard, and I wouldn't want to return unless it's worth the while on the project. Tom, we love you as Spider Man. Spider Man No Way Home was incredible, and we're all waiting for part four. So let's just make this fucking movie. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Uh, the Apprentice movie we talked about a little bit ago with Sebastian Stan as Donald Trump, Jeremy Strong, and Maria Bakalova have also joined the film. Wyatt Russell says that Thunderbolts is not a straightforward Marvel movie and that people will be shocked. So I love the sound of that. Criminal Record, we have the new trailer for the Apple TV Plus thriller. 
Production has officially wrapped on the Michael Keaton Beetlejuice 2 sequel. That's right, Tim Burton has announced that they are officially wrapped, and that's pretty awesome there. We have the trailer for Griselda, which is Sofia Vergara's new show. Where it's a new crime drama that she leads coming out soon on Netflix, so pretty cool trailer there to check out. Got an article up with Bob Iger talking about the status of Marvel and Star Wars and Disney and just kind of where they're at. So check that out if you'd like to know more. Chicago Fire is being rocked by another cast departure ahead of season 12. So check that out if you want to know who's not coming back. We got Hallmark's January movie slate. Um, some starring Kate McNamara, Erica Durant, and a whole bunch more. We got the full schedule posted for you guys. David Uyelio and Taylor Sheridan plan for more seasons of Lawmen, focusing on other lawmen in history whose stories should be told, says Uyelio, who plays Bass Reeves in the current version. So there you go. They're going to make it an anthology series um, about different characters. Uh, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is tracking for a troubled $40 to $50 million Christmas opening. Man, what is going on with the comic book movies? This is really bumming me out, man. These movies can't make no damn money anymore. I hate it. Uh, speaking of Lawman Bass Reeves, it, it they, the show has set a record for Paramount Plus for the most streams. So congratulations there. Um, let's see here. Zack Snyder regains rights to his script for Blood and Ashes, which he originally wrote as a 300 sequel. And then it got stuck in limbo, but he got the rights back. And if he did decide to do it, he says it would not be tied to 300. It would be its own thing going forward. Um, let's see here. Edgar Wright says that he is actively developing the remake of The Running Man, which he says will be closer to the novel version. Riches has been canceled over on Prime Video. Uh, we have your December streaming guide. So again, every month we do this. What's new on Netflix, Disney Plus, Peacock, Prime Video, all the above. Check it out and see what show you're excited for. Jane Seymour's Harry Wild has been renewed for season three over on Acorn TV. Uh, a bidding war is currently underway for a new action comedy that's going to team up Ryan Reynolds with Channing Tatum as they're going to be starring as brothers. Warner Brothers and Amazon are in the midst of, ty- of trying to acquire the new movie, which is called Calamity Hustle, which will be a new feature from Aaron and Adam Nee, who wrote The Lost City, which uh, Channing Tatum did with Sandra Bullock a couple years ago. So uh, sounds like a fun movie, man. And we'll see where it ends up landing, who will end up buying that one up. Uh, The log line for the movie uh, is about a down-on-his-luck former detective turned private investigator who, after being shaken down by a vicious crime lord, must track down his estranged brother. I like it, and I like Channing, and I like Ryan, and they're good friends, so why not? Let's do it. We have your first trailer for Halo Season 2. This looks awesome. It's going to be debuting on Paramount Plus on February 8th. So get ready for that. Season one, I was kind of mixed bag for me. I liked some of the episodes. I didn't like some of the others. This, this trailer looks really good. So I'm hoping they really turn it up for season two. We also have the new trailer for the boys season four. We have no official release date. We know it comes in 2024 and this looks awesome. I love the boys. It was great to see this trailer. It's only a minute and a half long, but it's awesome. Check it out and enjoy. Fallout for all of you video gamers Fallout is officially coming The TV show adaptation coming to Prime Video on April 12th We have the new poster and we have The first trailer so check it out And I think I'd never played Fallout It looks really good I think the show looks really really good So I'm excited for that We also have the House of the Dragon Season 2 trailer So check that out as well Lots of trailers man Reacher has been renewed for season three over on Prime Video. Congratulations, Alan Richson. He's so good as Reacher, and I'm glad that things are looking so good for season two, which comes out in about a week, that we're getting a season three already. So that is awesome. Star Trek Discovery's final season looks to come out in the spring of 2024. Uh, We have the um, first little teaser trailer for the Thunderman's revival movie, so check that out. Um, Let's see here. Uh, Will Smith, we got an article up with him giving us an update on I Am Legend sequel with Michael B. Jordan and even talking a little bit of bad boys. Uh, The Marvels has officially ended its box office run. As you heard, when I went through the top 10, there was no Marvels already, and it hasn't even been a month. And it has ended its box office run as the lowest grossing MCU movie in history. This is really a bummer, man. The movie has only made $80 million domestically. I think it's about 250 worldwide. 
I can't believe it. This movie did not deserve the bomb the way it did. It is such a fun, fun movie. It, my, I, my daughter just did her updated Marvel countdown, and she had this movie ranked at number one. And it made me so sad. I mean, I was happy for her that she had it number one, but it made me so sad that her favorite movie is the most panned and lowest box office. Man, it really bums me out. Um, it's a fun movie, man. If you haven't listened to our spoiler review yet, it's on the feed. Go check it out. Or am I still in the air? Spoiler review. Um, but yeah, sad to see it end its run. Uh, like I hinted at earlier, the first trailer for Godzilla X Kong, the new empire is officially dropped. The movie comes out April 12th. Looks like a ton of fun, man. Looks like we're getting a kick-ass team-up movie with Godzilla and Kong kicking ass on some new villain. And I'm there for it. So let's go. Why not? Um, let's see here. We got an article up about Deadpool 3 set photos. Uh, yes, there's spoilers. If you want to click them, you might not want to. But it's there for you if you decide to. Um, Kevin Feige says Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man will not return to the MCU. He says that moment is too important and they won't undermine it. So very cool there. Uh, a George Santos movie is in development over at HBO Films. We have the first trailer for Grand Theft Auto 6. This trailer was fantastic. What pissed me off is when it said 2025 at the end of the trailer. It's 2023, man. How are you going to drop me this trailer and say 2025? I've already waited like 10 years and three consoles for this fucking game. Give it to me now. Uh, What a tease. Al Pacino, Zolo Maraduena have joined the historical drama Killing Castro. So good to see that one locking up. Sexy Beast is coming to Paramount Plus. Uh, let's see here. Barbie is coming to Max, and an ASL version will also be included. Netflix has scrapped Adam McKay's average height, average build movie that he was working on. Carol and the End of the World, we have the new trailer previewing, ne- previewing Netflix's newest animated miniseries. Kim Kardashian is set to star in a new Hulu legal drama from Ryan Murphy. Congratulations there that she got that after working with him on the latest uh, American Horror Story. Killers of the Flower Moon is hit PVOD today, so you can now rent it or buy it if you like, and it will be coming soon to Apple TV+. Um, Johnny Depp is being eyed to play Satan in a new Terry Gilliam movie. The CW has announced some premiere dates for Wild Cards and Family Law Season 3. Lord of War sequels getting ready to go into production soon. We have the new trailer for ISS, which is a new intense space thriller with Ariana DeBose and Chris Messina. Um, let's see here. We got the new trailer for True Detective Night Country, which is coming out in January over on Max. And this is the Jodie Foster led season. Uh, more Evil Dead movies are on the way, according to Bruce Campbell. I'm down with that. Let's go. Uh, Director Denny Villeneuve says that Dune Part 2 is more of an action movie than Part 1. Thank you, Denny. I needed to hear that, so maybe I won't fall asleep in this one. Uh, Because Part 1 was a snore fest. So I'm glad to hear that Part 2 is more of an action movie. Let me have it. Uh, Cruel Intentions TV series. We've been talking about this forever. It has officially been ordered over a Prime video with Sarah Catherine Hook, Zach Burgess, and Savannah Lee Smith leading the cast. Um, Saltburn, Emerald Fennel's new twisted thriller will begin streaming globally on Prime Video on December 22nd. The Late Show has extended its hiatus as Stephen Colbert continues to recover from his appendix surgery. Central Park has been canceled over at Apple TV+. Plus. Um, Nicholas Cage talking about retirement, right? He's getting ready to turn 60 and he says he's almost finished acting with movies. He says, I may have three or four movies left in me, which is like one year for Nicholas Cage. Cause this dude has so many movies coming out. Uh, I hate to hear him say this. I need face off too, before he retires. He also states that even though he's hanging it up for movies, he says he is interested in maybe pivoting to television with one of the streamers and try something new. So that'd be pretty cool. Netflix and Apple TV Plus have an open door to bundling their streaming services and maybe doing them a little discounted together. That would be really cool there. Spider-Man Noir series is moving forward at Amazon Prime. And The Punisher's Steve Lightfoot has been hired as the co-showrunner. Barbie will be available to stream on Mac starting uh, December 15th. So in about 10 days, you'll get that. Um, we have a rundown of the biggest films new to streaming in December of 2023, like Maestro and Rebel Moon. 
along with Indiana Jones, a whole bunch more. So check out the breakdown to see when your favorites are coming to streaming. Um, let's see here. Ransom Canyon will star Josh Dumal and Minka Kelly. It's going to be a new romance fueled family drama and contemporary Western saga that charts the intersecting lives of three ranching families, all set against the rugged expense of the Texas Hill country. This will be coming soon to Netflix. We have the trailer for self-reliance, which is Jake Johnson and Anna Kendrick's new Hulu comedy thriller. Um, the Grand Theft Auto 6 will be the biggest, most immersive yet, says Rockstar, the, the company that makes the game. John M. Chu's Wicked movies will include at least, at least two new songs. So Pixar is taking advantage of the 2024 movie slate, and they're going to re-release some of their animated films that came out during COVID that went straight to Disney+. Plus. They're going to give them a theatrical release over the next several months. Movies like Soul. Turning Red and Luca will all get theatrical releases. I think this is really cool. I didn't like Soul very much, but I loved Turning Red and I loved Luca. So glad to see that um, they're going to get theatrical releases that they should have had in the first place. Uh, Feud, Capote versus the Swans is coming soon to FX as the new anthology series is returning. Max has renewed Adventure Time, Fiona and Cake for season two. Foundation has been renewed for season three over on Apple TV Plus. Um, Sunflower, the new movie, uh, has cast Scott Speedman as the villain. We have the new trailer for Bob Marley, One Love, so check that out. Argyle trailer, supposedly all the footage in the trailer is only the first 28 minutes of the movie. I find that very hard to believe because there's so many scenes in that trailer, especially when like Samuel Jackson tells Bryce Ellis Howard, like, it's time that you meet the real Argyle. Okay, like, that's not going to happen in the first 28 movies. I don't know, maybe it does. Maybe it jumps around chronologically, um, but very interesting to hear that it's just the first 28 minutes. Spider-Man 4, Drew Goddard is reportedly Sony and Marvel's top choice to direct the film if John Watts decides to not return. The Accounted sequels officially on the way with Amazon producing the film and Ben Affleck set to reprise his role. I love that. I love The Accountant. So happy that they're going to move forward with the sequel. Leverage Redemption has been renewed for season three and it's moving from freebie over to Prime Video. So congratulations over there. Uh, so You Think You Can Dance has also been renewed for season 18 over at Fox with a new judging panel, including Nigel Lithgow. Uh, we have the Critics' Choice nominations broken down, so check that out if you're interested. The Morning Show scores the most nods, beating Succession. Very interesting there. And Lucy Lawless, uh, her show My Life is Murder has been renewed for Season 4 over on Acorn TV. What the fuck is Acorn TV? Like, I've never even heard of that before, and I keep seeing shows being renewed on it. Where do you watch Acorn TV? I don't know. Maybe I have that channel, and I just don't know. But that is it. That is it. That's where we wrap up the show. I'm glad we got through the news pretty quick. We did it 41 minutes, so it only took us 20 minutes to get the news out after all the reviews. So I love coming in under that 45 mark. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you feel more knowledgeable and up to speed with the latest and greatest in entertainment news. Now make sure you follow all the socials. That's amiontheair.com. Make sure you like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash amiontheair. Make sure you like us on X or Twitter for those of you that prefer that name. It is twitter.com slash am I on the air and myself directly at DX Don Mega at am I on the air at DX Don Mega. Same handles over on threads if that's your better platform. Subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, um, tune in. Google Podcast, Amazon Music, we're on everything, so make sure you subscribe to us and give us a thumbs up wherever you listen to podcasts. Please subscribe to us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all simply at Am I On The Air. We'd really appreciate it. I do video reviews on TikTok, um, sometimes with my daughter. They're a lot of fun to do anytime we do a family movie film, so check it out. We got our newest one up there with Candy Cane Lane, and I got to get her to record one with me for Family Switch. Um and thank you to our great affiliates at Red Dragons Radio and the Pop Culture Pros. Follow on Twitter at Red Dragons Radio, reddragonsradio.com, and the Pop Culture Pros. Follow on Twitter at Pop Culture underscore Pros. Thank you guys for always streaming our show on demand. And that'll do it for me on this Tuesday, December the 5th. I hope you all have an amazing week. 
We'll be back next week with another exciting new edition of Am I on the Air. So take care of yourselves and each other. And until next time, y'all, peace. Red Dragons!